Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks everyone for coming. Hope the conference is going well. Hope you're having some good food, having a good time. So I'm Dan Wendorf. I'm Otako Ueda. And we're, we work for Pivotal for the CAPI team on Cloud Foundry. CAPI team is responsible for building the Cloud Controller, which is the API front end to all the great back end components of Cloud Foundry. Uh, this is the API that gets used by tools like the CFCLI to provide the developer experience. Dan and I have both worked on, as consumers of the API as well as on the API for over a year, so we're especially excited to talk to you today about the Cloud Controller v3 API and the things that you can do with it. So the Cloud Foundry API is used by a lot of CF tools, uh, including the CLI, but lots of people, maybe you're, you, have developed tools directly on top of it or have interacted directly with it. Uh, and as a result, we get a lot of feature requests. Unfortunately, some of the more frequent feature requests are hard or impossible to do by incre incrementally improving the API. So we needed to make a more drastic change to allow us to respond to the changing needs of app developers. So what were our goals? Backwards compatible. We want to maintain V2 behavior. Eventually, we will be deprecating V2, and new features will be added exclusively to V3. But for now, we know that there are a lot of tools out there, and we don't want to break that experience. Modular. <laughs> the CAPI team. Uh, as members of the CAPI team, we have a lot of great ideas about how to improve your app deployment lifecycle, but we are just 10 people. We want the API to be modular so that your ideas are possible and so you can customize your app development lifecycle to your needs. Flexible. <laughs> A flexible code base for us means we can deliver more features for you. Faster. We want users to spend less time repeating the same process over and over again and more time delivering. Easier to manage. We want to get rid of hidden complexity and the need to have a deep understanding and a deep knowledge of the internals of Cloud Foundry. Develop, developers shouldn't have to know that an app needs to be restaged if a new build pack doesn't work out. And your app development process should be easy to understand and customize. <laughs> Consistent. Lastly, we want the API to be discoverable and unsurprising. So how do we accomplish these goals? We initially wanted to extend the existing API, uh, but we were blocked by overall domain modeling and design. So the V2 app is a monolith. Uh, it's defined by app configuration like the start command, memory limit, CPU, number of instances, and the droplet in the package. And it doesn't really allow for things we value, like the flexibility of implementation or client-side manipulation. There is a meta programming layer that's closely coupled uh, with and shared with the database models, or shared between the database models. And it can make adding simple features for one API resource a very complex task. For instance, if we make a post request to V2 apps, we hit the same code as, as we'd hit if we were making a post request to V2 spaces. So if we were to try to change the code for how apps behave, we could make an undes undesirable change in how spaces behave. Uh, this previously existing implementation made new feature work very slow. So we needed to redefine some of the constructs to provide flexibility and future proofing. So our solution was to extract things like the droplet and package from a V2 app into top level domain objects that have their own API endpoints that all live under an umbrella V3 app. By splitting the app monolith into more manageable and independent concepts, we're able to provide an API that supports more flexible and nuanced management of your Cloud Foundry apps. So for the technical details, uh, we encourage you to check out Jim Myers, Lon Santos, and Zach Robbins' talk from last year's summit. The details are provided in this slide. So Dan, what does using the V3 look like? Fantastic question. So I think the best way to understand what using V3 looks like and the benefits of V3 is to go through and build a little bit of a sample app uh, that uses V3. 
All right, so we're going to start by talking about building an app in V2 and how we can make it better. We'll start with some really basic setup. Uh, what we're going to build is an app about my favorite monkey of all time, Boots. Uh, so we've created a Boots org already, and we'll use the CF CLI to create a space for development uh, that we're going to work in right away, a space for production that we're not going to work in just yet. Uh, we're going to target the development space, and let's say we've got a little bit of a database somewhere, so we'll create a user-provided service that uh, just has a uh, username and password. Uh, by the way, that is my password. Please don't use it. <laughs> All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we will push the app. Uh, this is gonna be a normal web app, so it's a little bit complex, which means it's got a few different processes. The most important one, I would say, is the web process. So we push Boots Web. Uh, we're gonna need a, need a worker process to do things in the background, so we push Boots Worker. And finally, we're gonna have to have a scheduling process, so we'll push Boots Scheduler. Uh, in order to do this, we have to push the same code multiple times, but we've got these different start commands with the dash C flag. After we do that, we'll bind our database service to each one of those applications so that it can connect to our database. It's great. All right, so if we look at what's going on here, the push is a little bit more complicated under the covers than just a CF push. What the CLI is doing is orchestrating a bunch of different API commands to get our app up and running. All right. The first thing that we do is we create an empty app with all of the metadata for our app. As Itako said, things like CPU, instances, memory. Uh, we create a route for our app, and we bind that route to the app. Uh, then we upload the files, which might take a little bit of time, depending on how big your app is. And this real interesting one, staging of the droplet. This is where once we've uploaded the source code, we compile the source code, we bring in dependencies, we build the droplet, which is the runnable file, the runnable zip file that's gonna be sent to the DEAs or to Diego. Uh, if you've pushed an app to Cloud Foundry, which I hope you have, uh, you'll, notice, you'll, you'll probably have noticed that staging an app takes uh, a very long time compared to the rest of the steps. So once that's done, we can run the droplet and we have our app up and running. Um, but it does take a lot, a lot of time because we're doing the same thing over and over again. We're repeating ourselves a lot. So what does this look like in V3? Well, it's a lot simpler. You can just push Boots, your one app. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of the same steps, but we only have to do these steps once instead of once per app. Once we've done a single stage and we've made our single droplet, we're able to just run that same droplet three separate times. Uh, what we're showing here, the CF push boots, this is uh, implying that it's using the V3 of our API, all the new features. Uh, this CLI command doesn't exist as we're showing it now. Uh, what we're showing is a potential for the CLI as uh, they do the work to incorporate the V3 CLI, or V3 API. Uh, but we're going to continue to show this as what the CLI could look like, or if you were to write a plugin, what your plugin could look like. Now, when we see just the CF push boots, in my estimation, this feels better. It's viscerally a better experience because I just have one app. When I'm talking about my app with people, I say, I have boots.com. I don't say I have Boots Web and Boots Scheduler. So it, it always felt weird to have to do the same thing three times. The way we get this to work is by adding a new file to the root of your application called a proc file. It's a very, very simple file. It's been used by other, other places like Heroku uh, where we just define a one-to-one -one correspondence of we want a web process. It's going to run our bin slash web uh, executable. Same with worker, same with scheduler. When this proc file is present at the root of your app, uh, Cloud Foundry knows what this means and knows to spin up three processes for the one app. I think this is really, really powerful. Uh, it means that we can talk about our app as a cohesive, cohesive unit, and Cloud Foundry is, is doing s single things to the app, even, even though we've got multiple parts. And now that we know that we can manage uh, each of these processes in one single app, it means we can do all sorts of other cool things. We can control services all together for our app and affect all of our processes. So the same, that, same way that we are able to compress push into one command, we can also simplify service bindings. So there's no chance of forgetting to bind a service to one of your apps and not your other app. They're all orchestrated at the same time, a lot more consistent. All right, so that's, that's the simple uh, development flow for building your app in development. 
And presumably at some point, you're going to want to go to production. So what does it look like to move your app from development to production? In the V2 world, it's very, very similar. You're doing the exact same processes. You're pushing all three apps. You're binding services to all three, all three apps. And uh, you're going to map the route to, uh, to a route that you think is a little more production ready. Um, but because we're in V3 and we can orchestrate these things together, we can do a lot better. Uh, we can do something like copy. Copy an app from development to production. Uh, this wouldn't, re wouldn't need any sort of staging. It'd be a lot faster. Uh, you don't even need the code to be on your development machine. The code, the droplet, this is all in Cloud Foundry, al Foundry already. So why would we expect someone to have to provide it to us again? It's a lot of duplicate information. Uh, all this is doing is it's copying the app configuration. It's copying the same droplet that was already staged. Uh, it's binding the services. And it's going to run the droplet. Uh, very simple, a lot faster. Uh, in V2, we would have had to stage six separate times, three times in development, three times in production. And in V3, we only have to stage once. We've cut maybe 15, 20 minutes out of this process, depending on how complicated your app is. Right. So, updating. Uh, so in V2, this is what we do. Uh, we stop the app. We push our updated code. We create a package. We upload the files to that package. And then we stage those files and create a droplet. Once that's done, we start the instances of the new droplet. In v3, we do something similar, but a little different. We push the updated code. We create a package. We upload those files. And we stage that droplet. Next, we stop the instances with the old droplet. And then we assign the new droplet to the app. Once we've done that, we start the instances with the new droplet. Now, what does downtime look like in the V2 world? As you can see by the grayed out area, in V2, your app is down for almost all of the updating process. In V3, it's only down when we're swapping the old droplet with the new droplet. So what if the update wasn't so great? and boots.com is down. What do we do in V2? Well, in a typical deployment process, maybe we would freak out, look through the logs to find the previously deployed version, check out the older SHA, and once we've done that on our local machine, we'll deploy, that local, de we'll deploy from that local machine. And this will be outside of CI, which could be a potentially very dis uh, destructive or dangerous process. Once you've done that, you sit around hoping that you deployed the right thing and wait for your app to come back up. In v3, this could be as simple as one command, cf rollback. Uh, because v3 keeps track of your app's last five droplets, you can roll back to any one of them. So we've talked about how existing workflows could be improved with v3. Now we'd like to talk about something completely new. We're really excited about this feature, and users have been requesting this for a really long time. And Diego's had this feature around for a while now, but we just didn't have the structure in place to expose this. Implementing v3 has made it possible. Tasks. You can now run arbitrary commands on your app. Your task and app share the same code, the same environment variables, and the same service bindings. So what can you do with them? You can run a migration. You can send an email blast out to your users. You can make a query against your database. Anything your heart desires. You'll also have easy access to the output of every task, as well as a history of tasks you've run. So Dan, what's in store for the future? Thank you, Taco. Uh, when we had been practicing this, Hitako used the phrase, anything your heart desires, and she really wanted me to sprinkle confetti or glitter. I really wanted to, but I thought, you guys probably don't want to get covered in glitter, so I restrained myself. All right, future 
uh, v3. Now that we've done most of the work to get v3 off the ground, we're getting ready to release it in an alpha form. Uh, it means we're going to start moving a lot faster and getting new features. Uh, Re-implementing the push and the update was really great. We had a lot of wins. Um, but we were excited about tasks because this was something that we couldn't do before. And we're excited to bring out some new features. Um, but first, what we've got to do is work with the CLI team to get this baked into the CLI itself. So you're using V3 uh, without even knowing it. Uh, we think that backwards compatibility is really, really important with this. Uh, we know people have all sorts of scripts, I know I do, that use V2 already. Uh, we want that to continue to work uh, while you can start incrementally taking advantage of new tools that are using new features in V3. Uh, our goal is that you're, you'll be able to use V3 tools and V3, V2 tools at the same time to manage the same app. Um, we're also really uh, thinking about zero downtime. We've, inc we've reduced the amount of downtime you're going to have when you push an app, when you update an app. Uh, that's still not great. Uh, what, what we want to have is zero downtime. People have found ways to work around this with custom blue-green deployments, uh, but we think that we can do this, especially working with uh, Diego to do some of this orchestration. Uh, people have also been wanting to take a droplet from one Cloud Foundry and move it to a separate Cloud Foundry. Maybe you have a development Cloud Foundry with uh, less restrictions for developers and a production Cloud Foundry behind some network infrastructure developers don't have access to. Now you'll be able to, or you will be able to take a uh, droplet that you built in one Cloud Foundry and port it out. Uh, that'll be nice and simple. And we also want people to be able to create processes outside of the standard push process. Uh, you saw creating the three processes with the proc file. Uh, that was nice, uh, but in, in uh, the vein of V3 wanting to provide these building blocks for developers to do new things, have new workflows, we'd like people to be able to add processes, modify processes, and remove them from a running app without having to do a push. So, I can tell you're all at the edge of your seats. You're ready to run home and start using V3. So how can we do it? <laughs> so now that we've gone over some possible ways to use V3, we'd love to have you to try it for yourselves today. It's free. You could start out by checking out our new docs. We'll be updating them as we add new features. And if something could be more discoverable or more consistent or easier to understand, now is the time to let us know. Uh, you can try V3 by using CF curl, or better yet, write your own custom plugin uh, to build your own workflows. And you can also try our, out our V3 CLI plugin, but I think it's better to build your own. <laughs> uh, V3 has been experimentally available uh, on recent versions of Cloud Foundry. Experimental means that we make no guarantees about the API endpoints themselves, and they may disappear, uh, and your data might be wiped. Um, realize this may be challenging to work with, so we're working hard to produce an alpha release. Um, our goal for the V3 alpha is a guarantee of no data loss, but there will still be API changes. Um, and it's in track to be released in the next quarter, so your feedback is especially useful now. Uh, you can submit an issue on GitHub or reach us on the Cappy channel on the Cloud Foundry Slack. Community involvement is especially important to our team and to, I think, Cloud Foundry in general, so we try to have a pair of spend time addressing these concerns every day. Uh, thank you very much, and are there any questions? Hello. You mentioned about the app bit promotion from between spaces without restaging. So what if I'm actually in a staging environment and a staging space, and then I move this to prod, then without restaging, I would be actually aiming at a staging database rather than the production database. So why, why, what's the reason behind not staging the bits? I understand that you want to avoid the staging for the web, the process, or the schedule, or whatever. But you need to stage across spaces because the service endpoints, the service credentials, those things would have changed, right? So the, uh, the credentials for services are available as environment variables. Yeah, the build pack, actually, a lot of the build packs look at those environment variables and put the configurations into the app bits, into the droplet. So if you don't do staging, you don't really get those. 
Yeah, it, de it depends on the build pack. Some of the build packs will try to build that in, uh, write custom uh, configuration files. So to take advantage of this particular feature, uh, you would have to not, not do that in staging and only look at the service environment variables at runtime. So it might not work for every app? Depending on the build pack. Do you have plans to make the droplet available to our admin? So there are instances where the droplet crashes. The app basically crashes, and uh, there is no way to actually get into the water container because it's a short-lived one. Like, it's gone in five seconds. And uh, either you have to put in, like, a sleep statement or sleep forever so the water container or the garden container does not get removed right away, evacuated it right away. So is there an option to export the droplet so you can test it on your Linux environment just to see what, what's failing? fix the code, and then re-push it. Uh, would, there, would you take that as a request, enhancement request? I'd, I'd have to check with our PM, but I believe there are plans to make downloading a droplet available. Thank you. I think, is downloading available already? No? Oh, take it back. <laughs> That's how much I thought it was in, in the plan. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Uh, right now, we can copy the droplet between apps, but not spaces. That'll be maybe, I mean, that's like a implementation thing. If, if you have those custom needs, if I want to copy this but not that, uh, the API does support through multiple, multiple endpoints. I want to copy stuff from this endpoint to that one, from this endpoint to that one. So if you have different needs, uh, that's where a custom plugin or maybe a plugin with lots of extensibility would come into play. That's a great idea. <laughs> and I believe uh, RPM, Nick Kaluger, will be available to talk about that. <laughs> Could we configure the number of droplets that are saved? That's also something that Nick would be open to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think in general, uh, these sorts of questions are really great ones to hear. Uh, it lets us know the sorts of use cases that are important to you. Uh, so that's, we're talking to us in Slack or uh, submitting GitHub issues. Uh, we'll let your voices be heard, and we'll definitely take that into consideration. Uh, RPM is also very vigilant on the CF dev web, uh, mailing list. So really, any of those um, things are great ways to talk to him. Take a bow, Nick. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> are there any other questions? David? How long will V2 live after you finish V3 completely? <laughs> Far too long. <laughs> <laughs> For at least if, I don't, don't you know? <laughs> Some amount of time. <laughs> Pro probably at least a year. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry, your V2 stuff will continue to work. And we'd like to make it a point, like, V2 should just, people who are currently using V2 now should not be able to notice uh, that the V2 functionality has changed at all. They'll just notice that there are more features in addition to that. That's all. Thanks, Great. everyone. Thank you.